Um, yeah, thanks guys for coming. We are Bukhara Africa. We're part of a global group called Bukhara Global, um, which is a collection of properties all over the world, Spain, Germany, Austria, South Africa, Bahamas. Um, I've, it's my job to look after all the South African investments and uh, under our portfolio we've got a wildlife reserve which you guys are on at the moment. We've got a couple of leisure products down on the coast, uh, some things in the Kalahari, in Popo. So we, we operate on 12,000 hectares in the Karoo. It's uh, about 20 kilometers outside Kofanet. Uh, so it's right it's smack bang in the middle of the, of the Great Karoo area. Uh, we are on the more mountainous side of the, of the Karoo with the Sundays River flowing through the property. Uh, we always say this is the mountainous side of Profanet and then you get the flats. Um, so we, we're in the pretty side. When we invested in the area, they, it was mainly agriculture, small stock agriculture. So there were some, some established uh, Lucerne production systems, which we continued with. Um, we went a step further to, to change the irrigation to drip irrigation. <clears throat> Excuse me, which is which is way more you know efficient and, and and you know environmentally friendly, so to speak. So we do try and, and, and keep ourselves safe for the for the bear months, which is winter mostly, um, and feed only when we need to, you know, in an extensive environment, not in an intensive. So the hunting makes up the biggest portion. It's probably about eighty percent of our revenue and twenty percent general tourism. Uh, that would be both local and international. Europe is probably our biggest market um, at the moment. Um, I would say if I have to divide it up between Europe and, and America, it's about 70% Europe and 30% America. Right, yeah, so it is, we are still in the same boat as everybody else. We've, we've got our marketing season abroad that, that we you know, do every year. Probably 80% to 90% of our clients are return clientele or word of mouth. So. You know, it, it boils down to providing a really, really good, concentrated, exclusive service that's meshed in with conservation practices to our clients, and the story just runs from there. So it's it's marketing that doesn't really cost us anything. Return clientele. Well, I think that the best way to overcome it is to be honest about it, and uh, we we try not to shy away from the honesty, um, and and. Our uh, approach point always to people who, who have an issue or a misunderstanding about where hunting and wildlife tourism fits into tourism and conservation is that at the end of the day what we're looking after is habitat and, and not, not animals and wildlife. Yes, of course we do, but we're looking after habitat and, you know, utilizing it to the best. If you go and get mathematical about it and, and you do the business model on it and you do the you know the return on, on, on investment it's it's it really is in my opinion quite impossible just to maintain and look after your investment which is the habitat for the long run by just concentrating on tourism so it's 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 basically educating in a layman's term in layman's terms to to the to the naysayers or the, the antis yeah so it's it's quite difficult um I mean, firstly, establishing new roads is, is, a, is a science. We've, we've got a lot of mountains here, a lot of runoff. So if you don't do your job right, you know, you're going to end up with a huge erosion problem. Uh, so we, we're very blessed in the sense that we've got a, a, quite a good fleet of machines and, and earth moving equipment, uh, which we use to not only establish new roads, but also maintain the current roads. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's like any other place. You, you need, if you need to get somewhere, and there's no road, you know, you're not going to pay attention to it. And, and, and so it's the road infrastructure is vital for an area like this. Yeah, so we have a <clears throat> pound for pound, we've got quite a small labor force. If you look at the size of our property, uh, I've been concentrating the last five years to have multitask laborers. So I don't just have a tractor driver or a Lucerne baler or a tracker or a skinner. All my guys that I employ can drive a tractor. They can skin, they can bale, they can <clears throat> fix a fence, they can stand behind a bar and pour a beer for a client, you know, so it's multitasking.